USC is going full Oppenheimer right now. Absolutely nuclear as we're starting to kick off commit season and visit season for the class of 2025. Specifically, the focus is on defense for the Trojans. So it begs the question, what happens to this USC program? What happens to the Big Ten as a whole if the Trojans are able to be good or even great on the defensive side of the football? From L.A. to Piscataway, all Big Ten, all year long. This is Big Ten Ten. I've said it multiple times on this channel since it was announced that the Cardinal and Gold of Southern California were joining the Big Ten Conference. Who am I to doubt Lincoln Riley? Who am I to doubt his prowess as an offensive coach? USC? They got that side of the ball figured out. Lincoln Riley is one of, if not the best, offensive coach in college football. He proved it during his days at Oklahoma, and he's proven it in his two years at USC. You go back to his days as the head coach of the Sooners, they were able to get to college football playoffs, but what happens when they got to that four-team invitational? Georgia just kept on scoring in that Rose Bowl. What has happened in his two years at USC? Caleb Williams goes out there and wins a Heisman and puts up some gaudy numbers, maybe on his way to becoming the first overall pick in the NFL draft. But you know who else gives up some gaudy numbers? USC's defense. They're a triple-digit unit right now in the country. That's the unit that needs some work as the Trojans make their way to the Big Ten Conference, and that's what needs to be focused on. And that, as soon as Lincoln Riley let go of Alex Grinch, the priority became defense. Lincoln Riley assembled an all-star staff led by DeAnton Lynn coming over as the defensive coordinator from Crosstown rival UCLA. And that all-star staff is getting to work. We're going to talk more about that staff in more detail in a little bit. But first... This staff is taking dogs out of the dog state in Georgia and bringing them over to the sunny beaches of Southern California. Then that's a pretty good spot to look for on defense, specifically the defensive line. Let's start first with Justice Terry. On Sunday, it was announced that he flipped from his commitment from Georgia. He was committed to the Bulldogs since January of 23. Let me repeat that. The number eight player in the 24-7 sports composite rankings overall, regardless of position, was committed to Kirby Smart for over a year. And then DeAnton Lynn, Eric Henderson and company, they come into town and they say, uh, yeah, that's mine now. That belongs to me. You're coming over to USC. You're going to be playing defense in the Big Ten Conference. And he wasn't the only one. You also get high four-star Isaiah Gibson for the class of 2025 out of, you guessed it, the state of Georgia. Six foot four, 250 pounds. But this isn't the first venture into Georgia or the Georgia Bulldogs program for USC. How about Cameron Fountain from the class of 2024? He's going to be on campus as a freshman this year. And although he, this next guy isn't from the state of Georgia, he came from that Bulldogs program, Bear Alexander, in the middle of that USC defense. Boy, if you're going to look for a spot or a program to build your defense, especially up front, the state of Georgia and the Georgia Bulldogs program, flips and transfers, that's not a bad place to start. That is certainly not a terrible building block that USC has started. Let's talk about this defensive coaching staff. Because this is why this is all happening. DeAnton Lynn is the coordinator. Great hire. I think he's going to do fantastic things. But I'm not sure if he's the focal point. I think he's got a tremendous supporting cast. And that supporting cast, specifically when you talk about getting commitments from these elite level defensive linemen, you got to talk about the new defensive line coach, Eric Henderson. Because he's the guy, I think, that's stirring the pot. He's the guy that's really making the impact. He's the guy that's making this happen right now. Henderson was on the Los Angeles Rams defensive line coaching staff ever since 2017. 17 and 18, he was the assistant D-line coach. He took over as the head D-line coach in 2019. Can you think of somebody that just retired that was playing 
defensive line for the Los Angeles Rams during that time and that he probably had an impact in developing. Oh yeah, he was at practice. Aaron Donald, maybe the best defensive player of our generation. It pays to have somebody like Aaron Donald in your program, even if it's just sitting on the sidelines, being there and watching practice, giving a testimony of sorts, supporting his former position coach. That speaks volumes. Aaron Donald, when you look at high school defensive linemen, Aaron Donald is the guy that all these kids want to be. And now if he's the guy at USC that's supporting his former position coach, that's going to speak volumes. That's going to put be that's going to put USC up a few rungs on the ladder when it comes to not only these two guys, but other guys down the line when it comes to recruiting defensive linemen into the University of Southern California. They've proven that they can bring in the best of the best into Los Angeles, California, after their reputation has been smeared on defense these last few seasons. Now it's up to the development, which brings me into this season uh, coming up, 2024. It's a year like right now in spring ball with USC, and then as we look forward to fall camp and eventually the season, this first year it's about installing schemes. It's about working on these fundamentals. USC was a terrible team at tackling in space they got to find a way to attack the ball carrier wrap up and bring him down they got to find a way to get back to the fundamentals and get back to the basics in coverage as well that's what this season has to be about usc is going to open up this season with lsu right one of the top offensive programs in all of college football right now so you might suffer some growing pains early 11 of the 12 opponents that usc faces this season are power for opponents. You look at nine conference games, you look at Notre Dame, and you look at LSU. That's a lot of really good teams, especially consecutively when you get into that Big Ten schedule as well. So this year, it's about forming the foundation. It's about developing for the future. Look, you're not going to jump from worst to first. When you have a defense like Michigan and what all they have coming back, look what Penn State was last year. Look at what Ohio State's going to be. Look, you're probably not going to be a top four or five defense in the Big Ten this season if you're USC. But this year is about making that step forward, setting the expectation, building the foundation, crumpling up what you had under Grinch, and building back up what you now have with the Anton Lynn and this coaching staff. Let's ask the question, what happens if USC is good or great on defense. I think a similar question can be asked in the Big Ten. What if Iowa has the 75th ranked offense in the country? It's the same type of thing on the other side of the ball for the Southern California Trojans. Now, I look at tape from the past two years, and this was far from a balanced team. I love that word in life. I love that word in football. Balance. Work-life balance. Run-pass balance. Offense-defense balance. It's all about being a balanced football team. The national champions, 15-0 this season, Michigan Wolverines. What did I say about them week in and week out? They can beat you any way they choose to beat you. If they want to run the football down your throat and not pass it like they did in the fourth quarter against Penn State, they can do that. J.J. McCarthy, he can shred you. He can tear you up. If they want to throw it and they load the box, they can do that. And, of course, they had that balance on the defensive side of the football. When I look at tape... Of USC, they had anything but balance. Caleb Williams was trying to go out there and play hero ball most of the time because he knew if I don't go out there and throw four touchdowns, if I don't go out there and throw for 400 yards, our defense ain't going to stop anybody. The Ducks, the Beavers, the Huskies, the Bruins, you name it, they're going to march down the field. So on a third and 12, when I'm rolling out, I feel like even if I'm under pressure and even if that wide receiver isn't exactly the most open, I got to try to make that play instead of throwing it away and relying on my defense to make a stop. Okay, all of a sudden, if this USC defense is good, if this USC defense is great, it's going to make things easier on the offensive side of the football. There's not going to be as much pressure on Miller Moss and this offense to produce 40, 45 points every game. Like I look back to that Washington game at the Coliseum. 
USC was playing pretty good on the offensive side of the ball. They were marching up and down, up and down the field, but they just couldn't stop Washington in the fourth quarter. If USC is able to have a good or great defense, they're going to be able to quickly rise up into that maybe upper tier of the Big Ten that maybe exists with the Penn States and the Michigans and the Ohio States and the Oregons of the world as well. You look back to the last time that USC was really relevant at a national level, of course, the Pete Carroll years. You can go down the list of quarterback. You can go down the list of playmakers at running back and wide receiver. There were generational players. We know the names. But I think a reason why they were such a top team during that era was because of, you guessed it, balance. Not only did they have generational talent on offense, but they had outstanding talent on defense as well. And actually, I think it's kind of overlooked sometimes because of the players that they had and quarterbacks that they had on offense. You look at guys going back to Troy Palomalu. You look at Ray Malaluga. You look at Sean Cody on the defensive line. They had really good players. So Reggie Bush didn't need to rush for 300 yards and three scores every game. So Matt Leiner didn't need to do everything all himself and play the hero ball that maybe Caleb Williams needed to play at some time. Balance. Use it in your life, USC. Use it in your football program. And if they can become a good to a great defense, this is a team that's going to be a lot more balanced and have a lot better chance to win not only conference championships, but national championships. This is the beginning. There is certainly a long way to go by the time we're talking about the Trojans as a top 20 or a top 10 nationally ranked defense. And we're talking about them in the same breath as the Iowa's and the Penn State's, the Ohio State's and Michigan's as well. But this is certainly a great start. USC has assembled a staff that can certainly build a great defense. Do you think USC can be a defense in the top half of the Big Ten this year? And how do you think these commitments are going to shape the future of Trojan football and maybe even Big Ten football in the future? Leave your thoughts, all things USC defense, in the comments below. I'm Big Ten Ted. We will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching Big Ten Ted, where it's all Big Ten all year long. Make sure to like the video to spread the word of Big Ten Ted to the masses and subscribe to the channel for updates on Big Ten content that drops every day.